Hey everybody, it's Paul Grossman, the Dark Arts Wizard, up on Twitter, and today I'm going to be showing you Microfocus's Unified Functional Tester, that's UFT version 14.51, and we're going to be showing off a little bit of some of the cool things it can do with parallel execution, that's running multiple tests against multiple browsers at the same time. Uh, just to kind of show you what we've been talking about in the last couple of videos, you can see up on my channel out there, we are doing something called a lexical analyzer, also known as natural language. So we're just taking a framework that converts plain English, like click on the get in touch button, into an actual line of code that will execute. And just to be sure that I'm not pulling any fast ones out here, the object repository here, it only has one object. It's a browser, and that is it. So I'm gonna give this a run and run it in an individual mode and see and show what it actually does for us. It goes and launches our browser and arranges it on the screen so that we can have it in a nice orderly manner. Puts in my name, it clicks on the send button without putting in an email. It verifies that there's a message saying put in a valid email. We put a valid email in there and then verify that it says thank you for your inquiry. And that test is completed in just 17 seconds. That's a great looking test there, but what we want to do is run it against multiple, multiple browsers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go and do this. We're going to go to the parallel runner. And by the way, that's my email coming back saying that we actually sent that message out. And it's going to run it on four different browsers, i.e. Firefox, Chrome, and Edge. And we'll just tell it where the test is located at. When I hit that, it starts running four instances of Unified Functional Tester in the background, invisibly, and begins to parse through the code in order to perform our actions out there. Now remember when I said that only had one object in that object repository, that's because we're doing dynamic object identification. And we're doing it using both descriptive programming, which is basically a string for our object, and programmatic descriptions, which give us a collection of objects that match what we're looking for, and we kind of look for what matches in there. You can see we've just got our first browser up and running over there, and we're about to navigate over to Candy Mapper, and we are looking for our second, uh, there's our uh, second uh, quick test uh, the print log, and we are going to start seeing them kind of collect over on the right hand side and arrange in the correct locations. you also see that one of them was actually waiting for the browser to appear. So we got that. And we'll see if we get all these items to pop up. And all three browsers, there's three of them coming up. We should get a fourth one. Let's see if we can get all four up before the first one stops execution. There's our third going through, and all of them are just kicking around, uh, executing and finding our objects on the fly, all in parallel. And we're just wrapping up here. You can see at the very top, these things are saying whether they passed or whether they failed. And then they kind of wrap up. This is all the information we're descri describing. Anything that says code means it was executed dynamically. The code, a line of code was written on the fly. And we're getting passes all over. That looks very good. And we're wrapping things up over here very nicely. There's one last thing I do want to show you is what the results look like once the test execution completes. And that's pretty easy to see. There is some of our emails coming in. And we had a warning on one of our objects because it was waiting so long for that object to appear. We can take a look at our results. We're looking at results number 109. I'm going to go down here to my window uh, to our browser and go take a look at our results. Our results are sitting over here. It's a nice little HTML file and it will open up in another browser. And out here we can see exactly what our executions were, what different uh, browsers we use. And in fact we can even go take a look at Explore and see, see what happened over here. Okay, it actually used smart identification to go and find the object. So we know that it's uh, smart identification kicked in to uh, identify the browser and then everything else continued on. And even at the very end, 
all the stuff that was in the print log is spit out to our results so we can actually see exactly what was being uh, output as we went along. And you can even see at the very end, two passes, no failures. Pretty cool. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demo of Parallel Execution with Unified Functional Testing 14.51. My name is Paul Grossman. I am the Dark Arts Wizard. Uh, please follow me on Twitter and check a look at some of my other videos up on this channel that show you some of the more interesting things of the demo that you just saw. Have yourself a great day.